everyone and welcome back to Brown Coat Reviews. Today we are here for another behind the scenes interview and today we are talking to DJ Hall who is an acclaimed and amazing comic book artist. So thank you so much for joining me today DJ. It's an absolute pleasure having you here. Hey, thanks for having me. So DJ, how old were you when you first started doing art? I've always done art just I mean, when I was little, I used to draw cartoon characters and stuff, whatever show I was watching. Um, in my last couple years in the military, I, I went to a Comic-Con for the first time. And I told my friend that I was with, um, I, I told him, I was like, me and you need to do this someday. And so I just started drawing more fan art, just the movies, the TV shows I was watching. So I, I guess I've always kind of drawn, but I haven't drawn like consistently until, you know, just a couple of years ago, I started getting serious about it. So which one was the first comic book cover that you've ever done? Or like a sketch cover or like an actual book? Either one. So I did, um, the first ever cover I did was for my friend, uh, Chris Hayes and McLean McGuire. They, they wrote a, a book called Don't Pay the Ferryman. And I was doing a print for them for their Kickstarter. And they, they liked the print. It was a Goonies style movie poster looking thing. And they actually turned it into a virgin cover for the Kickstarter. And so that was cool. And then um, from that, I did a, another cover, a Western cover for the Disputed Territory. Um, my friend Mike Kenson, he writes that it's a Western book. Um, so those, I did those kind of back to back. So those were the first actual covers that I did. Which explains the Goonies never say die t-shirt, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now of all the covers that you've done, do you have a favorite or a couple favorites? Um, the one I'm working on now, I can't show you yet, but that's probably going to be my favorite. Um, I just finished the detour cover. So out of all the actual covers I've done, it's probably, probably my favorite. It was fun to do. Um, and I just had, I had a blast doing that. Now, of course, you're mentioning the Kickstarter with, you've got a lot of different projects going on at once. So we've got the Kickstarter, we have some other things. We're, of course, doing something for the Kraken's Horde. How many projects are you typically working on at one time? And what are you working on right now? <laughs> I used to, I used to just do one, one thing at a time. And then um, usually when I'm working on a project, I'll get tired. And so I'll just stop and then there'll be like days or sometimes weeks where I'm not touching it. So recently I just started forcing myself to take on as many things as I could at once. That way when I'm tired of one, I jump on another one and I'm always creating or always working towards something. And yeah. it's been working out really well. Um, I'm, I'm, I've just finished the detour cover, which is in the Kickstarter right now. And then I'm working on a cover for, Fred Keel, uh, his, his issue number four for Queen Cobra. I'm doing a variant cover for him that, that's going to be finished here in the next couple of days. And then I'm also working on the Kraken Horde. They're, they're doing a, a Venom 200 show. And I'm going to send them kind of a Venom care package with a bunch of sketch covers. And I'm, I'm going to actually try to work on a, a print that's only going to be available for that show. And anyone that buys anything, they just get a free print. It'll be a Venom themed print that I'm going to work on. Oh, that'd be cool. Besides that, I just I have other random stuff. I'm working on art to get ready for Comic Con shows, and then I'm also trying to write my own comic book right now. So, so Comic Con first. Which Comic Cons will be you be at soon? So I'm doing um, with my new job. I just moved to Colorado. So I normally I would do a lot of cons in Texas, but the first con I'm doing this year, kind of post COVID or whatever, will be Cowtown Comic Con in Fort Worth. It's actually yeah. in Hearst, but between Fort Worth and Dallas. And I did it last year. My friend Chris Hayes and McLean they put that show on, and it was awesome last year. And they got some good guests coming. And it's a really it's a true Comic Con. It's all about comic books and comic art. Um, it, it's a lot of fun and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And then I'm hoping, I just emailed, I'm hoping to get to Kansas city, Missouri. They're doing a con in August. Yeah. And so I just have to coordinate it with my, my day job, but um, I'm hoping to go out there in August and 
I'm just going to start booking cons when I can, as much as I can, and just try to get out there more. Someday we'll drag you on over to North Carolina. Don't worry. <laughs> I want to come out and meet you guys. Absolutely. So you're writing your own comic book, though. So what kind of genre, what sort of title are you working on? So that was that was something I've been wanting to do for a while. And uh, my friend I told you about, I went to a comic con with for the first time. He uh, he likes to ink and do ink work. And so I told him, I was like, hey, would you be interested in inking a series of comic books if, uh, you know, if I do the pencils and stuff? And we started talking about it and we both kind of like weird and creepy stuff or um, yeah. like thriller type books, stuff like that. And so I was like, I don't think at this point, because it's my first book that I can write multiple issues of a story, but I think I could write many issues of like kind of one off one shot stories. Yeah. And so we kind of came up with this thing called Think Fear. And it's all about like psychological fear, horror style. Like it's almost kind of like a Twilight Zone, Black Mirror type, it just whatever, honestly. And yeah, so we, we he has stories written that he, he already has written. He just wrote down for fun. I had a story that I came up with recently and I was like, let's just, let's just do it. Let's make it happen. And so we came up with the name together and we both started writing uh, issue one and two he's writing one i'm writing one and then we're both going to do the art on the interiors and the covers and just see where it goes i uh i reached out to my brother too trying to get him involved in the comic con world because he's that's not his thing but he i didn't know that until a couple weeks ago he likes to write and so i have him working on an issue and he's already you know showed me like part of the script and it's pretty good so each story is going to be different um you're going to be able to pick up one issue read it start to finish and just get a creepy or a weird or a unique story and then the next issue is going to be completely different you never know what it's going to be and we're mainly doing it for us and hoping other people will enjoy what we come up with so. do you think you'll do something like a kickstarter or will you have it more a uh, comic-con exclusive I'm, I'm hoping to do, uh, we want to do a Kickstarter um, for the for the launch and we're going to try to launch two issues and we came, uh, we decided on October timeframe. Oh yeah. So yeah, this is like perfect timing for that type of book. And then issue one is the story I'm working on. So it's going to be a Halloween themed story with the, uh, with a twist at the end that hopefully people won't expect. Mm -hmm. And It'll be a lot of fun. My, my buddy, his story is going to be awesome. So those are going to be the first two issues. We're trying to launch it um, hopefully in October and get it in people's hands, you know, in November. So definitely. And I have a strong feeling I may be reaching out to you a little closer to October to talk about that book. Yeah. So let's talk about the cover that you're working on that you're willing to show us. So right now I just started this today. It's uh, It's going to be one of the the blanks that I send to the Kraken's Horrors guys. Um, they're doing that big Venom show and I wanted to contribute and try to get my name out there on the East Coast or in yeah. Carolina or so. Yeah, I was, uh, I had a bunch of these blanks I've been collecting for a while and I picked, this is my first time ever doing a, a, a blank uh, black sketch cover. And so I just started this like maybe an hour ago, but that's... It's a lot of fun. It's it's a uh, the, the only thing I've really been working on is the red part, but that's what I that's what I have going on. And I'll take it over here real quick. But these are some of the books I laid them out because I sent them to Nick and Palmer. Um, so I just I have a bunch of random issues that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on some of those guys and and then ship them out to. Uh, to the Kraken Horse guys for the show. So when you're trying to design, especially when you've got a completely blank slate to work with, and beyond the fact, I'll just say that symbiote cover is gorgeous, and I know it's not even finished and it already looks great, but um, when you're kind of coming up with ideas and designs 
do you do a lot of kind of pre-sketching to kind of get an idea of, you know, how much you're going to fill in or do you just sort of start doodling on the page and then it just comes to you? I sometimes I'll do little like almost like stick figure sketches, just real fast, like simple shapes on the side for this one. I mean, that was, this is my little color swatch <laughs> to see what the pencil is going to do on the paper. Um, I just kind of sketched out, like, I just started sketching and I was just like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I just, I wanted to keep it simple for the first one. And so I just did a straight on pose with the, the symbiote taking over Spider-Man and I love the whole Venom symbiote like story and characters and everything. So I just, I did something that I would want, you know, in my position and just to, I want to do a cool piece of art. So this one's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, as I get more comfortable on the, the black paper, then I'm going to, you know, start experimenting more and see what I can do with like paint and other things. But this is color pencil. That's all I'm working with right now. Um, let's just state for the record, I have worked with colored pencils. So I think every child has, and my work never looks like good. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I, I took the color pencil a couple years ago and I, I just fell in love with it. I, I love working with it. it. It's time consuming. Like it takes a while to get a completed drawing, but um, it's really cool. This black paper, it, it, it's a little bit different, but you know, it's still, it's still the same. Just take, take, take the time and build up the layers and get the contrast and the shading and the light how you want it. And that's, what's cool. I like, it's relaxing to me and I could sit here for hours and just listen to music and, and draw. That's seriously amazing. Beyond the fact that I can envision in the future, someday there will be spawn covers. I know that they're coming someday, but that that's an amazing start. I can't wait to see what the venom looks like when you're all done. You yeah, had the teeth and ah, oh, that's going to be awesome. So only other question I had, of course, for the, the background of, of a lot of different comic books, because I've, I've seen sort of the balance where sometimes, you know, Patrick Leeson, who's known for some of his more simplistic covers lately, where it'll just be kind of something in the foreground and nothing in the background, which is a great statement. And sometimes people will fill the entire background. As an artist, how do you decide, you know, how much is too much and how much is just kind of overkill? I, I just kind of go with it, honestly. Um, I think some artists, when they do backgrounds, they do them first. That way, you know, if that turns out good or whatever. I just, I, I just kind of go into the drawing and just gravitate towards one part of it. And I usually do the main character first or whatever's in the foreground. And then I decide if I want to do kind of a more artsy, you know, a splash background or just a simple like, you know, color box behind them to, to make it pop more or do a detail of like cityscape or, you know, something, something going on in the background. It just depends. Um, like I said, it, it, like this one, I'm not going to do anything in the background. There might be a little bit of back lighting behind it and I'm just going to focus on the character on this one. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Now, I also saw that you had done the J. Scott Campbell challenge of kind of recreating that infamous uh, black Ooh. cat image. Yeah. How long did it take you to do that? And what inspired you to create your version of that character? I, uh, I like tattoo art. Like I have tattoos. <laughs> um, I've always liked tattoo art. And so I started doing sketches of kind of tattoo style stuff. Um, and so when he when he posted that, I was like, well, I want to get in get in on it and do kind of a tattoo ish version. And so that's what I did. I, I had to go to work that night on a night shift. I had like three or four hours before I had to go to work. And so I have these new ink pens. I got some new Copic or Copic markers. And I was like, let's just let's have fun with it and, and do something cool. And so yeah, that's what I, I came up with. And but yeah, this is the, uh, that was the, the drawing I came up with. And for three to four hours, it's gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was fun. Um, I like how it came out. The first tattoo style drawing I did um, just a couple weeks ago, I did a Star Wars. Yes. Uh, Boba Fett drawing for May the 4th. Um, I have some friends that have a comic store in Dallas, and I... I sent it to them just so they could have a print 
you know, to uh, to get people as they came in. So, oh. yeah, the, those were the two tattoo, um, tattoo-ish drawings that I did recently. I have a Venom one that I started, but I haven't finished it yet. Which does remind me, actually. So on your Instagram page, you have the world's most gorgeous image of Tony Stark and Captain America. It is amazing. But if, let's say, I knew someone, Jelliot, who needed a copy of that particular print, would I just basically send you an email? Or, you know, how do people get copies of some of your amazing art? So I, I need to come up with a website. I've just been busy with this move and everything. Um, usually just through Instagram or Facebook. That's where 90% of the people reach out to me. And I, I usually, I do pr pretty good about responding like as soon as I can. That print, I don't know if I have any left. That was kind of my older stuff, but I could, I could make a couple more prints of that because it was a popular one. That drawing was an original, originally 18 by 24. So it was a large color pencil drawing and it took like 40 or 50 hours to complete. And I did most of it on Facebook and I sold the original to a collector guy down in Austin, but um, that, was a, that was a fun one. That was just something I wanted to do for me. And it's, you know, it's from the Civil War movie yeah. and something I've wanted to draw for a while. And so I just sat down one day and started working on it. And I, I loved how it came out. I like drawing in the larger scale. I don't do it much because um, it is time consuming. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, the, uh, I, can, I can get your friend a print for sure. Like I still have the digital file. I just, I'm trying to move to new art um, and all of my print stock, back stock or whatever is still in Texas. Um, but I'll, I'll have that down here in a couple of weeks. So I might still have a copy if I can get you. As an artist, do you ever struggle with letting go of the original sketches? Or are you kind of content to at least keep a copy for yourself and then sell the original to someone else? No, I haven't really had that issue. Um, maybe I'm about to get into painting. And yeah. like I want to do some Lord of the Rings work and a bunch of my take kind of almost like Del Otto is a big inspiration for painting. And I want to, I want to get into that and do my take on the characters and, and get away from doing just fan art for movies and TVs. Yeah. So the paintings might be a little bit harder to get rid of, but I haven't done one yet. So I don't know. But as far as the drawings, I've never had an issue. Like I'd rather, if somebody likes it, like I'm happy to, you know, to sell it to them. And I haven't had an issue keeping anything. Um, the only one I kind of liked, I did a Wonder Woman with Linda Carter and Gal Gadot. Yeah. Uh, and that was also a large 18 by 24. And my mom actually ended up with that one. So I still kind of have that one. Like I could check it out, but I kind of did that and she liked it a lot. So I just gave it to her. Um, Cause that she used to watch Linda Carter growing up and, you know, we got the modern. So yeah. No, I was just going to say you're doing, you have better restraint than most comic book collectors because as you know, we all grab our favorites and then we never ever want to let them go. <laughs> yeah, I, haven't, I haven't done a piece yet that I, I just want to like completely hang on to. I just, if somebody likes it and then they want to buy it, then I'm, I'm more excited about that. I'd rather it go to somebody else's home that was going to appreciate it in the time I put into it. And yeah, so I, I do plan on doing Wolverine is my favorite character. And yeah. So I plan on doing a lot of Wolverine art just because I like them. And those a couple of those pieces I'll probably keep. And if I ever get to do a cover for like an image or something like that, yeah. I might hang to the original of that one and put it on my wall. But other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to sell it or give it away. So. Now, of course, you showed us the couch of, you know, all the blank covers that still need to be created or designed upon. How long do you think it'll take you to, to get those finished? Um, so I'm off the next couple of days and I'm just going to sit here and draw blank covers for the next few days and nice. next week. So I'm going to give myself about seven days. I'm not going to do all of them, but I'm going to try to send them about at least five to six covers and then... Um, so, I mean, that, and that shouldn't take me too long. I'm, th I'm thinking by Monday, I can have them finished. That's, you know, averaging a cover a day. So, 
Nice. And then I'm going to send them out. Yeah. I'm a cool thing I'm going to do with the, the Kraken Sword guys is uh, their one year anniversary is coming up in July, I think the 24th of July. So they're doing a one year anniversary show. So I'm going to work on a blank cover and I'm going to do a wraparound. Um, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I don't know which book, but it's going to be a Kraken Sword themed book. And that's just going to be kind of a gift to those guys, but that one's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing that one. That'll be cool. So basically, if I mean, you've got a lot of great stuff coming out, if people want to get in touch with the Kickstarter, we've got some amazing covers. We have some prints. Um, we have some amazing original art heading to the Kraken's Horde. Um, I'll have all the information down in the description box, but is there any other, you know, I mean, you've got a lot of amazing upcoming projects that you want people to know about. I'm just, I'm, I'm getting away from color pencil. I'm just, I'm going to get into painting. I, uh, besides the book, I'm trying to write and create. I'm really going to get heavy into sketch covers. I have like two short boxes full of blanks and I pretty much have every book of every character. So um, like stray dogs, I, I got three stray dog blanks and I'm going to get you one um, with your greyhound. But um uh, yeah, I just with the with the paintings, that's going to be kind of my big, you know, my big projects and what I'm looking forward to most showing off because that's where I'm going to get to like kind of push myself and, and do something kind of cool. And the prints, I'm going to start limiting them. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of keep art fresh. And so I, I don't know how maybe like 50 prints per piece of art that I do. And that'll keep stuff fresh that'll, you know, and if they start for some reason, if I start running out really quick, then I'm going to up the print count. But I like right now I'm setting on back stock of prints for, you know, from a couple of years ago and I just want to keep stuff fresh. So I, I would just say be on the lookout for the acrylic painting stuff I'm doing, the originals and the prints and the new book I'm going to work on. And I kind of have a, a little project that I've been thinking about for about eight months. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to do it. But it's not going to be a subscription box, but it will be a box. And included in the box will be a custom T-shirt design. Ooh. And will be a limited print that you can only get in that box, along with other things like stickers and maybe like a coaster or a coffee mug or, you know, just random stuff. But each box will have some sort of theme that I come up with and I'm going to have limited boxes. And then if I sell all the boxes, the limited print that's in the box will be only available if you buy those boxes. And so out of all the boxes that I sell, I'm going to slip the original into one of the boxes. So it's kind of like you're buying a raffle ticket to win the original piece too. Um, and I'm just going to line the boxes up and just pick a box seal it and ship it. And they're going to come in custom boxes with art on the outside of the box. Yeah. And like I said, each box will have a t-shirt. So if you reach out to me um, and it'll take a, it'll take like a month or so probably to process everything and get the shirts and everything made. But I, I'll just get people's t-shirt sizes and do kind of like a, kind of like a collector's box of my art. And like I said, each box will have a theme. That's kind of the goal. I'm hoping to, Get that going by the end of the year i'm really looking forward to that and just kind of bring something new you'll get you know a lot of money worth of product and art for for a decent price so for the subscription box or it's not really a subscription box but basically an art box of awesomeness um if people are interested in things like that if they're following you on instagram when it's coming available or when you at least know the theme of your first box you're going to post it on there right yeah, it'll all be on, on social media. That's mainly what I'm going to do. Um, when I get the website up and going, it'll be on there also. And I'm going to announce what the theme is going to be ahead of time. And so the boxes will be available like every other month. That's the goal. So I'll announce the box and that'll give me a month to work on that box. And then they'll start shipping and so you'll receive, you'll receive a box if you bought one continuously, like every two months, you would get a new box full of maybe a blank sketch cover. Um, so I'm just going to throw random original art in there, sketches, maybe some of my scratch paper that I've worked on a cover. And I just have a scratch paper where I did the initial drawing. I might throw that in. 
and just kind of do something fun, something I think I used to do a, a Marvel collector core uh, boxes and I love receiving those. Like you never knew what was going to be in it. I knew I was at least getting a t-shirt and getting a, a comic book and then maybe a pop figure and then you, you would get like who knows what in it. So I just want to do some custom stuff and kind of give people that joy of like going to the mailbox and then seeing the DJ Hall boxes, I, you know, it came in and, and then the chance that they might get the original art piece that's you know, already limited, but um, get the original for that box. I think it'd be a cool way to interact with people and, you know, build relationships with people and get people excited about art more than me just selling a print. So, completely agree, especially if there's an AON painting that ends up somewhere, a t shirt, coffee mug, somehow in one of these boxes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're going to do Lord of the Rings paintings, you got to throw AON in there somewhere. I'm taking, I'm taking notes right now on the side. It's saying, Eowyn right. or Eowyn and Faramir, just subtle hints. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I will have us at all your contact information. You have some incredible work that you've already done, incredible work that you're working on. And I, I genuinely, I can't wait to see some of the upcoming work that you complete, create. I'm already following you on social media and I'm going to continue to do so. So I genuinely really appreciate your time. I know you have precious little with all the many projects that you're doing. And I, like I said, I have a feeling I'm going to be bugging you for another interview <laughs> when we get closer to some of the other releases of some amazing stuff. So thank you so much for all of your time. Yeah, thank you. Anytime, reach out to me. I appreciate you, you having me on and getting to talk about art, what, I, what I'm working on. Anytime. Have a great day. Yeah, you too.